Hello, everybody. Welcome to Tea Time. We are so excited this month to have John Scorina of Lionheart Fitness Kids joining us. He is going to be talking about three things to look for when you're certifying in a new format. And it's so exciting at Lionheart, they do have a new certification program. And I've had the privilege of talking with John all about it. And I'm so excited to share it with all of you today. So John, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, it's going to be a good conversation. I know. it. I, I think so. For sure. So as we get started, first of all, for anyone that is watching us live, please say hello. We'd love to hear where you're listening from. And we'd love to hear your comments throughout the show. So don't be scared to drop some comments in there. And I want to kick us off by John reading your bio, because it's really impressive. And it's really, really cool. So so let's get started. So John Scarina has devoted his life to empowering kids through sports and fitness. As a competitive roller hockey coach, John achieved tremendous success with his teams, leading one of them to win a national championship and another to win a bronze, a bronze medal at the Junior Olympics. That's really cool. I, I want to come back to that in just a minute. So in 2008, John founded Lionheart Fitness Kids, which is one class in Los Angeles. And his mission was simple, to create great programming and always putting the children first. And he's had a ton of success. Today, Lionheart provides sports programming to on-site child care facilities for some of the biggest companies in the world. So we're talking about Paramount Studios and Sony and Universal and Fox Studios and the list just goes on and on. And he's also worked with some really high profile clients, working with the kids of Kim and Kourtney Kardashian, Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, Justin Timberlake, and, and more, which is really, really awesome. So as I mentioned, Lionheart recently launched a new certification program, that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to give you all sorts of tips to look for when you're certifying in a format, whether it's Lionheart or another format. And let's dive right in. So, John, I'm curious how you started working with kids. How did that come about? That's it's a long, long time ago. Um, <laughs> so I started, I mean, I've honestly I've, I've worked, so I come from a really athletic family. My father was a coach. Um, you know, just my childhood was all about athletics. We played every different sport. We had, I had great coaches in, in my life that I really looked up to. And even from the time I was 15 years old, I was working in sports camps for my father um, developing curriculum, coaching kids. Um, so it's something that has always just um, come really naturally to me. Um, I started, um, I started, let's see, I was after I quit playing hockey. So as a hockey player, um, I wasn't that great, but I was, uh, I, I did all right. Um, and when I quit playing competitively, I started a a roller hockey organization down in San Diego. And we, uh, we had really amazing success um, in our first couple of years. As you mentioned, we had a team win a national championship. Um, and the experiences that came out of that for me were really life-changing. You know, so I was, I was always trying to innovate and create um, create different methods of, of teaching kids. So I'll tell you a little story. Um, one of the, uh, one of my teams, the team that won the national championship, you know, I had done a lot of research on, on the power of visualization mm, and love that. pro teams at the time were, were using visualization to, um, you know, just to, just to become better. So I started with my with my team, we would do a little visualization um, before every practice where I'd have the kids close their eyes um, 
and just visualize the championship game. So we'd visualize the score. I'd, I'd kind of walk them through um, each period of the game. And, and uh, it was just, it was really neat to see how, number one, a, a concept that was completely foreign to these kids. They were 14 year old, old kids. And it, just how they, they really bought into it and, and it became really enjoyable for them. You know, and I printed out a, uh, a picture of the trophy that they'd win if they won the national championship. And we put it on the, on the dressing room door. So before every practice, they'd walk out and I'd say, all right, boys, give the, give the um, trophy a little love. So they'd rub the trophy before they went out. And that, is awesome. that season, so we, whenever we did this visualization, we'd visualize the score. So we, I had them visualizing that it was a close game, the entire game, and then they won the game um, with a score of five to three. Got it. And so you told them like the score to- Exactly. Yeah, yeah okay. I, wanted to, I wanted to make it really, just really authentic for them. So I'd, I'd have us score a goal, then the other team would score a goal. So it was a close game, the entire game, and then we scored a couple goals at the end. Yeah. Um, but the score that we won the national championship game was the exact same score that we had wow. visualized all year. And that is incredible. I seriously, I get emotional talking about this story every time. Yeah. Like, it's just, you know, winning anything is, is an achievement because not because winning is the end all be all, but what it takes to win um, and be successful that's what's important so the journey of that and what it what it taught those kids it taught them that their beliefs had a tremendous impact on their reality you know and i know for a fact that every one of those kids and all of those parents who were involved in that experience will will take that with them um for the rest of their lives and mm -hmm. And they're going to they're going to understand the power of of the mind and how our beliefs become a reality. So that you know that experience really really hooked me in coaching, you know, yeah. because it, it it just it was so rewarding for me. I mean, honestly, it was I've won, you know, I've won many championships in my life, but that championship of having them win it and and the effort that they put in was the most rewarding thing I'd ever done. That um, is incredible. So, and I want to stop you real quick right there because that story is so powerful. I feel like we can end the show right now because the takeaway <laughs> from that story in and of itself and the power of visualization, so many of us have heard it so many times, but maybe yeah. don't practice it. I know I'm guilty of that, mm -hmm. but to hear the success and yeah, exactly what you said about the score being the exact score. Like I was getting tears in my eyes. I don't even know why, but I'm like, I know. Wow. I wow. Know. I get it's so powerful to me. Like I said, like I seriously could ball my eyes out every time I tell the story. <laughs> it's just, I mean, it was incredible to me. Yeah. So I, so so kind of the transition from from competitive coaching to working with the the little guys. Um, so I was living in Los Angeles and I was, I was coaching down in San Diego. Um, and I, I took a job with a company in Los Angeles that works specifically with the, the two to five year age range. Mm. And I never, honestly, like I, at the time I considered myself a real serious coach and, you know, I was all about, you know, the competitive sports, but when I started working with the, the preschoolers, it was honestly, it was just amazing for me. Like I would just howl the entire class long. I'd go home, I'd tell my, my brother and my family, like, you know, all of these little stories that just because kids are so raw at that age, they have no filter. Mm -hmm. And that's really what I love about working with this age group. It's, you know, we all put on this, this mask, so to speak, as we get older and we create this personality that we believe we are. And kids completely destroy that, you know, kids <laughs> cut right to your heart. And, and for me, it was just super rewarding work to have these little two and three-year-olds bop in 
and it was their first experience with with sports so they all come in at first they're a little bit timid they're hiding behind their mother's leg and you know just being able to bring them out of their shell and give them confidence and and you see on their little faces when they when they score a goal or they do something something good on the field you see on their faces how how much it means to them and one of the things that struck me coaching with that age group you know we all want parents all want their their kids to be involved in sports and fitness because we just understand the benefits of that you know, we understand that that fitness and sports is things that teach life lessons and and forming those positive habits at a young age um, is, is key. And just the importance of of that, like this being their first experience, I I just knew that I had to do whatever I could to make it amazing. So then they would have that positive association with sports and fitness. So they'd be like, okay. I want, I want to play sports or I want to be involved in fitness because those are the habits that we want them to carry on. So, uh, so yeah, so after that, um, you know, I, I had kind of visions of going on into competitive coaching, but after working with the little guys, um, I just knew that that's what I wanted to do. Um, and then I looked at the industry um, as a whole, because I've always had a business mind. I, I've always been, you know, that's just a, a calling for me. I love business. I love, um, I love creating things. Mm -hmm. So uh, I looked at the industry and one of the things that I saw was really missing with this age group is training, mm -hmm. you know, so, so this company that I was working with at the time, they were one of the biggest companies in LA um, at the time, and there was no real training. So they'd throw you a manual and say, go teach this, you know, but with preschool age kids, if you don't train the coach how to, um, how to engage a two-year-old and the developmental difference between a two-year-old, a three-year-old, a four-year-old, and you don't train them in early childhood education, mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter what they've played because it's completely different. So I saw, you know, working for this company and seeing other companies, you'd see all these coaches come in and the turnover was so great because they'd see the job online and say, oh, I could play with a three-year-old. How hard could that be? Yeah. You know, and they go out and you have a group of 20 three-year-olds that have no intention of listening to what you have to say yeah. unless you know how to engage them. So yeah. I just- It's hard. Out. I, um, like I taught, um, I coached a cheerleading group of five-year-olds, okay. um, <laughs> this was a number of years ago, and I had no idea how to control them. And there was supposed to be like a mom that was, you know, helping me. And then she dropped off. And so she you are spot that. on when you're like, if you don't know how to work with the kids, like it's like, what the heck do I do? And you're right. Like I did it one season and then I was out. I'm like, they're like, they're so wonderful, but I don't know what I'm doing. So. Yeah. And that's, and that's the thing. If you, if you do get the training, you know, because people always have the idea in their mind that they can just, they can, they can work with kids and it will be a fun experience. And it can be, it can be the most rewarding experience ever. If you simply know how to work with them. You know, and that's that's what I saw. I just thought, okay, I can do this better than anyone that I've seen do it. You know, yeah. so I may, from from that experience coaching with that other company, I just I knew I wanted to do my own thing. So 2008, I started my first class. Um, we started with one class in a park in LA. I think we had seven kids in the class, um, and I really took the time to develop the curriculum. So I worked with um, early childhood education experts to develop a curriculum that that was effective, number one, you know, and I took I was always a good coach and intuitively, you know, I knew how to engage them. Um, but I, I just wanted to get the the education behind it so I could teach it to other coaches. Mm -hmm. So we spent a lot of time developing the curriculum and and created 
honestly the best training in our industry by far, in my opinion. You know, we have we have um, e-learning modules where before a coach can even go out onto the field for their training, they have to they have to pass uh, eight exams. They have to take eight courses and pass eight exams and then pass a final exam. So by the time they go through that, they have a really good foundation of of how to work with with this age group. And then uh, and then. Um, then we do their practical training where we'll we'll teach them kind of one on one how to how to work with the kids. So uh, so yeah, and it just honestly it just took off for us. So it was me and my well, I started with a friend of mine, Godfrey, in the beginning, and we had a lion suit. We had we had bought this old lion suit from God knows where, and we went out in the park and and I remember one time it was like. 110 degrees in Pasadena and I had him in the suit and he seriously was hyperventilating so we had to take him out he was sitting on the hood of my car we were pouring water on his head oh my gosh <laughs> it was terrible but um <laughs> but then my twin brother so I have a twin brother he uh he came in as as um my uh, one of my first coaches that and he worked with me and and so it was a family run business and we were always you know we were always just looking to improve the program and we started to get a a celebrity following early on um, and that's what kind of helped propel us um, early so we we had Brad Pitt's kids in our program we had Dave Grohl's kids in our program uh, a funny story about is his kid actually one time we were doing a uh, we were doing um, warm ups or a drill or something and she was she was kind of just disinterested in in sports altogether so I I said come on let's come on in let's have let's have some fun so I was trying to get her into the class and she looks at me and she goes oh, you're just such a character. <laughs> And, and that's what working with kids, that's what I love so much about it is they just say whatever's on their mind. <laughs> yeah, um, and the funniest things like just pop out. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, we, we gained a uh, celebrity following. Then we started working um, with some corporate preschools. So we, uh, the company that we were working with is, is Bright Horizons. And we're now a national vendor with them. We're a preferred vendor for them. Um, but that was the first school that we had ever, um, ever got into. And then we started growing into the movie studios in LA, Paramount, Sony, uh, Universal. Then, uh, then I just went on the road and started opening offices in different, different mm. territories. So I went to San Francisco first. Um, then we went to uh, Denver, Chicago, New York, New Jersey. Um, and just started expanding the program. And because we had spent so much time on the foundation of it and creating the the training and and just everything involved, we were easily able to expand into other territories because honestly, a child in New York developmentally is the exact same as a child in in California. So a two year old is a two year old, you know, and and we just grew from there and and we haven't we haven't looked back since we've just been expanding and and trying to improve the program every every uh every year that's incredible oh my yeah. gosh so much good stuff yeah. um let's move in to the three things to look for when certifying in a format and we've already touched on some yeah. of these things and as you know you and i have had multiple conversations for those of you that are watching John and I have talked a number of times now and as we've talked there are really three things that stood out to me that makes them really different and I'm sure you're already seeing a, a bunch of those things already but the first is the education piece and you talked about this already about how the training and bringing in experts to develop your curriculum is is really substantial. So can you talk a little bit more about the education that you do provide sure. to, you know, people going through your programs, along with some other tips on 
what folks should or might want to look for in, in other organizations too. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I think the education, like I said, is that's honestly the most important, especially with coaching. You know, if you, like I said, if you don't know, if you don't know how to, how to work with that age group, and I'm talking specifically about my program, obviously, but yeah, you know, we, we spent that time developing the education and then the support that goes with it. You know, so we, we have all of our, our um, online e-learning modules. Um, and that's really, that's really just to give them a foundation because when you're training in anything, you know, when you're, when you're taking these courses online, some of it you absorb, some of it you don't absorb. Um, yeah. But, you know, that's, that's to kind of just start to seep into their consciousness. We have the exam process where they have to pass each exam before moving on to the next module. You Got know, it. So and when you say exams, like, I just want to yeah. <laughs> clarify, because I think a lot of us hear the word, oh my gosh, exams, that sounds so scary. But I'm, I'm sure it's one of those things. It's, it's just, a, yeah, it's a quiz. Yeah. So at the end of each module, we have a quiz. And then at the end of the entire course, we have a, a scary exam. A scary um. exam, <laughs> which I think is so funny because, you know, going through school, like we hear those words and then they start to like freak us out for the rest of our lives. But really it's so important just to make sure that like you're picking up the right things as right. you're going through the course. Like it's not mm -hmm. meant to be a, some kind of oh, scary yeah. thing, um, you know, where it's like, no, you're wrong. It's, it's really a, a learning element that helps with all of that stuff too. And we, I mean, honestly, with the certification program, we, we discussed internally, um, do we want to have them have to pass it a, a quiz before they can move on to the next module? And just given that we are working with, with early childhood, uh, early childhood kids, I think it's just crucial, you know, yeah. it, it's really important that they do understand that. Um, and they can, if they, if they don't pass the first quiz, they can take it again, they can go back and study. So, you know, our goal obviously is to have them um, learn and pass. So we haven't, you know, we're not trying to trick anyone or, you know, make it so right. difficult that they, they can't, they can't do it. But, uh, but right. yeah, but that education is, is so important because education is confidence. You know, so when I first started coaching, um, the guy I was working for, he'd, he'd throw me out there like with a birthday party, for instance. So you're going in there as supposedly the expert and he'd send me to these birthday parties with 53 year olds and I was <laughs> supposed to entertain them for two hours. And the parents uh, were just sitting back like, all right, we've yeah, got, you got it. Go so do it. And yeah. which was amazing for me because I just had to, I had to learn it and absorb myself in it, where every time I do something that I saw, I'd get a reaction out of, or the kids would engage in it, I'd write it down. And then yeah. that's how I kind of started developing my curriculum. But, but yeah, education is so important because it gives you the confidence to know, you know, what you're doing. So when you're out there in these, in these, um, scenarios where you have a bunch of kids you just have that confidence to know what you're doing is is effective and it's appropriate um, yeah. and it's fun it really is I mean working with kids is it's the best thing I've ever done yeah um, so yeah. yeah so first thing I would say when you're you're looking to um, certify in a new discipline is is what is the education you know is it is it um is it effective? Is it something that is going to going to help me be successful? Because obviously anyone who wants to get certified is looking to add an additional rev revenue stream um, to, you know, to their lives. So, you know, that would be the first thing is, is education. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would say the second thing is support. Um, and what we've created, um, it's amazing. It really is. So we have, when a coach um, first comes on and gets certified, they will go through the entire training process. 
um, which culminates in a a one on one virtual training with one of our master trainers. So after they've done the coursework, then they have a virtual training with one of our master trainers who will just work with work with them and have them um, put up segments of a class um, and help them develop the the skills that they're going to need when they show up to their first class. And then as far as support, we have a online platform that um, that is truly amazing. So yeah, yeah. Company. Talk about this because it is. It's yeah. so, yeah. so awesome. Yeah. coaches, And we've spent I mean, we've spent years developing this and we've been using this um, this software ourselves for years. So, you know, so we know it's effective. So, you know, mm -hmm. coaches are able to um, post all of their classes so they can create classes, post classes that show up on our parent site so parents can register for their classes. Um, they can take all of their payments so they can accept payments from their customers. Um, they can manage all of their rosters. Um, we have a invoicing system so they can invoice their customers. Um, we have a CRM system. We have um, a sales section that has how-to videos on absolutely everything they will need to know um, from doing a coach. You know, in the first video, when someone gets certified, the first video on there is, I'm certified, now what? You know, because that's, <laughs> exactly. that's, I think, most people, they get certified and they're they're excited to do it. And then they they don't really know how to grow the business. So yeah. we've provided in, in the back end, we've provided them that step-by-step -step process. Just follow this blueprint and you will be successful, honestly. And, mm -hmm. you know, we have all their templates. So we have flyers that they'll send to their parents and their customers. We have um, postcards, yard signs, just every kind of promotional material that, that you would need. We have templates for all of that. So all you have to do, um, all they have to do, and we have honestly, we have relationships with printing companies as well, where, where when they go in, they can select which template they want to use. So say they want a little awards certificate for their classes, they can just order it right there. And, and, um, and just, we, we've taken care of all of that. That is um, amazing. And yeah. I, like, I just want to talk about like, really how, how helpful all of those pieces are because you're right like with a lot of certifications and not all of them i mean you know there's a, a lot of variations out there but it is like you you get certified you you know you pass the test and it's like yes and then it's like all right like how do i apply this like where do i actually work what does that look like um and a lot of that too for folks that are are doing it on their own it's all right how am i going to take payments do I need to set up my own website now? All right, which email provider? You know, there's all these business pieces that for a lot of us, that's not really the part that we love. And right. so it gets really complicated and stressful and overwhelming. And the fact that you have taken all of that stuff out of the game and you're like, follow these steps, use right. this, you have, you don't even have to use Canva to create, you know, like your certificates. It's all done for you. And that is huge. That is really, really huge. So thank you for doing that yeah, for the industry because it's so needed. <laughs> it is. And, you know, we, we did all of this because, so my goal with, with Lionheart and this certification program is one thing that I've seen in, in our industry for sure, but the fitness industry as well. There's so many people who, you know, get certified as a trainer or a group fitness instructor, but it's very rare to ever meet someone who says, I'm a personal trainer um, and that's my full-time job. That's all I do, you know, because most people have to work multiple different jobs and their, their passion, which is fitness, that becomes a hobby really, you know, and I, I definitely saw that with coaching you know, you'd see all these people come in, they weren't trained well, then the turnover was so great. So the end result of that is people not being able to, to do their passion full time. So then they quit and get a so called real job. 
And then, then who suffers at the end of the day are the kids because they're not getting well-trained coaches that can make enough money to stay in the industry that they love. So yeah. with the certification, when I started Lionheart, because I coached for a lot of these companies before I started it, my number one goal was to be able to pay a, a wage that a coach could survive on. Um, so I, I paid right from the beginning, double what the industry standard was. So at the time when I started, it was $15 an hour. I started coaches at $30 an hour. And now with the certification program, so we've been running for the last two years, we've been running a revenue share program where we split the revenue for the classes and we have coaches averaging 60 to 70 an hour with the revenue share. Mm -hmm. But now with the, with the certification model, coaches can, they're averaging over a hundred dollars an hour, but we have many coaches making over $200 an hour. Um, and what it does, it gives them the ability to, to stay in the industry that they love and make amazing money. So even if, you know, you were to get certified, you can stay in that industry and keep whatever else you're doing. And even if you want to start off doing a class on the weekend, um, the earning potential is so great where you can literally work one hour a week and make an extra thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars a month working one hour a week. We have tons of coaches doing, it, you know, so that will keep number one, it will keep you in the industry where you're going to be getting better and better as a coach. You're going to become more capable and the kids are going to be are going to have better coaches that that can do what they love. Um, so that's what's really honestly that support why we you know why we have tried to make this as simple as possible is because we understand most people who are starting a new business or starting a new certification they have other things going on and and just anything that we can do to make that that easier for them to start making money. You know, our motto is in the first 30 to 60 days, if you can, if you can get one single class, that's enough to keep you in this industry forever. I mean, we can't get rid of coaches now. <laughs> Honestly, they they don't want to leave because they're doing something they enjoy, but they're making a sustainable income and they can continue doing it. So you know, I just, and I'm honestly, I, I'm at a place in my life where, where I want to bring as much value as humanly possible to the world. And that's it. So, you know, I, I want to bring this value. So we're, we're affecting kids on one end of the spectrum, little kids, we're, we're trying to create an experience that is amazing for them. But then on the other side, you know, being able to give an opportunity to coaches to give them their autonomy back, you know, yeah. because I believe autonomy is the, is the foundation of growth, where if someone can, someone can um, free their time up to do something they love, even if they're not a Lionheart coach forever, you know, if it frees them up where they just don't have to struggle and don't have to, you know, constantly be wondering where their, where their rent's coming from, if it gives them that freedom where they they can start to assess what's important to them in their lives. Like that to me would be the, the biggest gift ever to be able to give people the gift of autonomy. You know, here's a viable um, earning, highly uh, earning potential um, career that you can do extremely part-time. And soon, you know, most of our coaches find that they're making more money than they are with their other job and they just, let it go to the wayside and then figure out what they want to do. And if it's that sit on the beach all day, great. You know, I, I just, you know, that's, that's exciting to me. That's why I'm so pumped about this is because over the last, you know, several years I've seen, um, I've seen what coaches can do with their lives and, and how it's just life-changing. It changed my life. It changed everyone around me who was involved. It really did change their lives. So to be able to now give that to people is is really special and, and I'm excited about it. That's really cool. All right, so if someone wanted to get certified, so you, you, know, you go through the process, you take the exams, you do all of the things, you meet with your coach, all right, you're certified. 
you know, they're in your world. So as someone that is certified, they go out and essentially like reach out to their community to set up classes. And so that is on the coach essentially to start the classes as many as they want. And you mentioned something too, like about a rev share. Is that the same for like the coaches going through this certification or like, can no. you talk a little bit more about kind of what it looks like once you become a coach and like, yeah, kind of that piece, because I think it's really cool from what you and I have talked about. And so I just want to make sure like everyone like understands yeah. kind of how that works. Yeah. It's uh, it's actually better than a rev share. So before we launched certification, we were doing a revenue share um, with our mm -hmm. coaches, but we don't take any royalty whatsoever. So once a coach is certified, they keep 100% of their revenue. Okay. So and do they set their prices or do you have a standard pricing model for have, all the coaches? We have a recommended pricing and mm -hmm. obviously in different areas of the country, um, you can charge more or less. So we've set um, kind of a, a range of prices that we recommend. Um, but uh, yeah, coaches can set their own price. And right from the beginning, my philosophy with, with price setting was, you know, just price your program to, um, to represent the value that you're providing. So we've always, um, we've always had our prices on the higher end of, of what the market, um, market um, brings in. But we, and, and that's important. I mean, our coaches, just the training that they go through, um, we want, like I said, we want them to be able to have a sustainable, a sustainable income from this. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, once you're certified, you are, it's a licensing agreement with Lionheart, just like any other certification. Um, mm -hmm. Then they go out, you can go out into your community and, and start your classes. So that's um, working with preschools, local preschools in your area, um, setting up classes at the park. Um, gated communities, church groups. There's just so many, so many opportunities, especially coming out of COVID. It's just things have really changed. There's a lot, the, the homeschool movement is, is, is coming on strong. So there's so many opportunities in the community where you can set up a, a class. Um, and then we've provided the step-by-step -step, um, ways of bringing in that revenue. Um, so, so it's, it's essentially, it's a certification where you get certified and then you can go out into your community and, and set up classes. Got it. Do you find, sorry, I'm just thinking of questions here. Like as you're talking, it's like, oh, I wonder how this piece works. Yeah, yeah. So do most of your coaches set it up as like an ongoing class, like forever, or do most of them do like, oh, it's going to be an eight week thing. And like, does weather influence the classes in the park? I would think. Yeah, so. that's a good question. Um, it is uh, basically how they set it up. It's an ongoing program. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things when I started Lionheart, um, I, I really noticed with, you know, programs that just did one sport. So say a soccer program, mm -hmm. developmentally kids at that age, when three years old, four years old, once they've done a sport for a month or two months, they think they're completely mastered it and they're experts and it's boring. You yeah. know, so we've set it up where, where we switch the sport every month. So you'll set your class up. And once we contract with a school or in the park, we switch the sport every month. So the kids never, never get bored of it. Yeah. They're always learning new skills. Um, our certification has five sports. So it's soccer, football, baseball, basketball, and track and field are the first five sports that you would be certified in. And then every month you can switch the sport. And then by the time you get back to the, the sport that you started with, then it's kind of just you build on the skills that they've developed. And parents love it because it, you know, it exposes their kids to different activities because at three, they don't know if they like soccer or baseball. And, and I just found that formula keeps the kids in the program um, which is amazing for customer retention. Um, yeah. And it's great for the kids too, because you're constantly giving them new activities and it's, it's fun for them. And that's the problem with, you know, when you're doing just one sport, 
parents would be happy to have their kids stay in that for three or four years. But the child is, and any parent out there knows this, the child is driving the ship for the most part, especially at that, that age. If they don't want to go to class, again, not happening. Not going to class. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, this has been awesome. Thank you so much for sharing everything that you've put together and, you know, all these tips. It's, it's been awesome. As you know, I'm a huge fan. I absolutely love what you're doing. Uh, and I know too, that for anyone that is watching, you are willing to give a bit of a discount on the certification. Um, do you want to talk about that real quick as we wrap things up here? Sure. Yet yeah, for uh, for anyone through uh, through the Muscle Mixes Network, we are offering one hundred and twenty five dollars off the certification. Um, so the code you would use is Muscle Mixes one twenty five, and uh, we will be um, we will be posting um, on the Muscle Mixes group, um, and I know you will as well, Melissa. But yeah, but yeah we've we've offered that discount to any coaches. Um, who are associated or come on board through muscle mixes. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would love to, I would love to have, have your members on board. I think it actually really works well, um, you know, because it is, it is a profession that, that is, is, you know, nurturing people, people who are kind, people who are enthusiastic and, and energetic they do really well with with this job you know we have so many group fitness um, instructors as coaches and personal trainers so so yeah i mean our website is is lionheartcoachlife.com um, and we welcome anyone to uh yeah check out the website and if they feel that it's a good fit we'd love to have you awesome and we'll share all of these links in the comments and wherever you're watching this the links will be in the comments. So make sure you check them out and make sure you connect, reach out to John, learn more about what they're doing. Check out their website. It is full of so much more information in such an easy to understand way that I highly suggest that you go there and, and check all of it out. So John, is there anything else before we wrap up that you would like to share or, or say? Um, no, I think uh, I think we covered it. But uh, thank you, Melissa. It was it was a real pleasure talking to you. So I appreciate it. Well, I always enjoy the conversations that we have. So thank you so much. And for everyone that's watching, please reach out and we'll talk with you again next month. Thanks so much. Thanks, Melissa.